Where's the wise man, the prophet, the seer in America? Where can you go to acquire wisdom? I'm not talking about getting knowledge to fix a car or marketable skills. But where is the place that you can go to obtain the life skills required to guide your behavior? Sculpt a beautiful inner person. You might call it ethics or morals. Where does one go to get stuff like that? There really isn't a repository of wise men. In fact, the wandering oracle or prophet would be illegal in today's society. He'd be called a vagrant. Interesting word because vagrancy is a crime. You can go to jail for it. The definition says that you don't have a visible means of support. If they put you in jail, how could you possibly get out then? We can get a lot of wisdom and teaching from our parents, and we're supposed to, but they can only teach you as much as they themselves know. What if their lifestyle doesn't resonate with you? Why do adolescents rebel so much? Why do we question the milk toast way of life that many of us grow up in, safe and secure, but seemingly without any purpose, drive, or passion? Is it possible that we sense a, that the life that most people live, one of resignation to the idea that we can't really follow our passions, rather we have to be very practical and settle for a job or a career that stifles our life, kills the little person inside of us. Thoreau called it a life of quiet desperation. I think most people are afraid of dying, so we insulate ourselves, we defend ourselves as much as we can from anything that might disrupt our normal, our normal routines. We buy insurance, we build fences, we buy dogs, security systems, and in doing all that, modern society has made us afraid of living. We're afraid of going into the woods. We're afraid of getting sick. We're afraid of getting cancer. We're afraid of missing out. We're afraid of people that don't look like us. We're afraid of other people's opinion. And we're really, really, really afraid of losing the things that we have. We've been very successful at building an infrastructure that can provide safety and security for those people that just can afford it. Hence, poverty becomes the issue. If you're not poor, you won't have any safety or security issues. And the theory is, get the riches, and then you can work on Maslow's idea of self-actualization. But look at the casualties of modern society. Who, who isn't on anti-anxiety drugs? And you don't have to put up your hands. But but more than 50% of our marriages end in divorce, drug abuse, and alcoholism, they're everywhere. My heart grieves at the, at the loss of human potential that it is brought on by our bad decisions. Consider the obsessions we have, the, the standards we set in terms of maintaining a certain level of materialism. Who told us that we had to have all this stuff? Why can't we resist that inclination to buy more stuff, to have an affair, to start drinking, or maybe it's drugging? Why don't we have the power within us to resist those things that are destroying us? That's the poverty that we should be addressing. Poor people in other countries exhibit a resourcefulness and contentment that when you see it, you're, you envy it. But we're unwilling to put ourselves in, in that kind of position, a position for obtaining that contentment. Could you even imagine someone who would choose to get off the mainstream merry-go-round in order to seek out wisdom? I think this might be what it takes to see clearly in today's society. And that's what it would take to be truly free. We can be blinded by the lifestyles of the rich and famous, so we spend our time working very diligently for what are rightfully called the trappings of wealth and fame. <clears throat> trappings is the correct word because the time required to obtain them costs us a significant portion of our life. 
And in order to keep them, you have to give up even more of your life. It's an old Jewish proverb that says, wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. But wisdom gives life to those who possess it. Money is a defense. It can keep us safe from a lot, but at what cost? In America, we're told that we can have both wisdom and riches, that everything you needed to know about life you learned in kindergarten. From then on, focus your attention on putting a roof over your head, providing for your family, or just amass a whole bunch of stuff that acts as declarations or symbols of who we are. We're to the point now that we buy life experiences. Experiences that have been sanitized and smoothed out so they don't have too much danger associated with them. Then we spend the rest of our lives just scheming how to acquire things and keep them. And we seldom see people that are really content. Bigger house, nice car, granite countertops, another degree, fabulous spouse. Yeah, you can even buy those. I think the last remaining sin in America is being poor. I, I can't think of a geographic place that someone can go to live legally without a job. Now the picture that most people think of when saying the word vagrant is one of a homeless person, he's on the corner, he's begging for money, he just wants to get the next bottle or his next fix. But what if you chose to be poor, working just when you needed to, getting by day by day, and using the, t the other time to develop an inside dialogue? develop a morality that could defend you against the lies and perversions of an advertiser's pitch. When asked by a prospective employer, what can you do? Herman Hesse's great character, Siddhartha, he says, I can think, I can wait, I can fast. Siddhartha saw this as, that was enough. That was enough for his existence. I say that's a beautiful and powerful human being, positioned so much better for his own development than someone who has to maintain an expensive support structure that we currently expect. The house, the cell phones, the, the cars, TV channels. That person could spend time meditating about the purpose of life, or the worth of silence, the worth of consideration and altruism. Answers could be developed to questions such as, what does it fundamentally mean to be a man or a woman? Maybe he could use his time and freedom to examine the life force that seems just so mysterious, to gain self-awareness and understand that, that longing for community and purity. Kind of the antithesis of a TED Talk, I suppose, the opposite of technology and entertainment. But personally, I don't think so. I, I think that many of us could benefit by a deliberate chosen sequestration, not incarceration imposed by someone else, but a conscious choice to go out into the wilderness and seek and cry out for wisdom and power on the inside. Not for monetary prosperity, but for directions on how to live correctly. What better place to gain clarity on what is actually necessary for life and truly rewarding and satisfying to the soul? Is this life, is this thing, this America that we do, is this all there is? Do we just run from one distraction to another? Do we make mistakes, fall into responsibilities that just suck the life out of us and bring us into a club where no one really speaks about the elephant in the room that says, are you happy? Is it worth it? Is there a better way? Have you paused? Have you reflected? To what length would you go to find solid answers to big questions? Or... Are you happy just to be entertained? To spend or kill or pass time? Being a protected spectator rather than a dangerous participant? A participant trying to foster, emulate, and develop a spirit that you can share with others to change them for the better? To get people to be more considerate, less wasteful, less self-serving, more altruistic? Have you even ever met a contented, thoughtful person? Where do they live? What's their lifestyle like? Do you even care? Would you be willing to make the investment in time 
to discover truth or something that you can believe in without wavering, something that you can base your decisions on, something bigger than yourself that you could actually give yourself over to. Get away from those cliche advertisements that tell us how to live, tell us how to enjoy life. Find out stuff for yourself. Discover what it's like to be elemental. You'd probably be poor, but free. You'd be amazed at what you can live without. Another, another proverb says, there is that makes himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that makes himself poor, yet hath great riches. When I was younger and wanting to find out how to be a man, I miraculously met some poor people whose mission it was to look for truth and then live with the consequences. I sold most of what I had and started sharing my life with this group of people who spend their time reading, praying, meditating. They were worried about the internal development and we used our what was left over to provide for our needs. It was our secondary resources. Kind of crazy. But it gave me power over my fears. It taught me how to be considerate and care for others. My hands have never been so clean as they were then. There's so few compromises. I matured. I, I, I benefited by that, that idea of purity, purity of the soul. And I grew up so afraid of so many things. And yet I found myself hitchhiking across this country, hopping on freight trains. I hitchhiked at an airport and got a ride. Slept under bridges. I slept under that bridge right over there. My first semester at OCC, I was still poor. Nobody found me. Poverty's not the problem. Use the term poor person in a derogatory way for long enough, and now the poor person has two problems. They've got a cash flow problem and the stigma that goes along with it. A psychological study had teachers announce that blue-eyed children were inherently smarter than brown-eyed children. And subsequent testing saw an increase in the blue-eyed scores and a decrease in the brown-eyed scores. Words matter. They matter. It just seems like the last real sin in America is being poor. I read a Wall Street Journal article a few years back. He described a man who couldn't be fired for his angry outbursts and his disposition. The man described it as it was his nature, rather than addressing behavior that should be corrected. We seem to just tolerate so many things nowadays that used to be quite unacceptable. Just don't be poor. The only time I went to jail was for not having a home. They called it illegal camping. Does it make sense that you can spend time working on your character and to improve it? That you can deliberately set out to be more patient, kind, considerate, and less burdensome to those around you? Is that worth the time and effort? What would that work look like? How would you accomplish those goals? If you want to be a better accountant, you study books and spend time with other accountants, but it takes a lot of work. There are books to study on how to be a better person. But where are the people that specialize in it? And how would you hang out with them? What would it be worth to you? In the movie Wall Street, Gordon Gecko declares that greed is good, that it spurs competition and hunger and desire for more. I, I see his logic, but he doesn't mention that he himself produced nothing. He made money on the, on the losses of others. In The Wolf of Wall Street, that Leonardo DiCaprio, he says that he's been poor and he's been rich and he chooses rich every time. But he used his wealth for debauchery and consumption. In the end of both movies, we don't see contented, peaceful souls. And who is it that you'd rather spend time with? Donald Trump or Henry David Thoreau? Better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king. There's an illusion that can, what can be done with money. Steve Jobs got pancreatic cancer 
Nothing he could do about it. Tracy Chapman almost got killed in a bus accident. We work to acquire, to save, and then brag about what we have to just continue the illusion. I've had some discretionary income. I'm certainly not rich, but I've satisfied some of, some of these things that have come across my mind. I wanted a fast motorcycle, and I got one. I was able to ride it 150 miles an hour. You know what happened then? I got bored. <laughs> I love jet skis. I, I like to jump the wakes and back of the boats, and I get all wet and do dangerous things. But after a while, they just get boring. I'd rather spend time helping people. When you help someone with a project that they've been thinking about, they've been investing in, they've been dreaming about, they let you into that vulnerable place in their life. You can be part of their dream. You can feel their trust. And there's an intimacy there that I, I wouldn't trade for a diamond ring. Being poor can make you appreciate the simplest things. It can make you considerate and thoughtful. It can give you a grateful heart. Your eyes can open to how things work. You start to notice the subtleties and the nuances of the surrounding infrastructure. You might even get a clear view on how to make some improvements. You start to appreciate clean water and sewers and showers and housing and heat and good shoes. Really, really simple things. You become less worried about external appearances and more concerned about how things work. I think that this is the making of a better person and a better, more informed citizen. But if I'm persecuted for being poor, if I'm continually reminded that I'm worthless, that I'm naturally going to inculcate that feeling and I'm not going to want to contribute, why should I give a damn? Poverty isn't the problem. Just because someone rejects a system that oppresses, imprisons, it destroys its constituents, and chooses a simpler lifestyle doesn't make them evil. And one more proverb. It says that through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeks and intermeddles with all wisdom. You got to have the desire. You got to separate yourself in some way. And that's only where this, that's only where the work starts. Then the work really starts. But what if your basic needs could be satisfied with a minimum amount of labor and your time could be freed up? That's what we have in America. What would you do with it? Richard Gere was making a movie in Manhattan recently about poor people. He had a full film crew following him. It was, it was almost an hour before someone recognized him. Because poor people are so invisible, so disenfranchised. That doesn't make them unwise or unworthy or unable to contribute something to your life, yours. Why is it that expensive clothes and expensive car, special degrees make a person worthy of your audience? Is it that you might be aspiring to the same level of socioeconomic status? Or do you want to feel superior or equal to a rich person? Is that how you want to see yourself? Can't a pers poor person have something to offer you? You. Couldn't you identify with the same internal struggles of someone who has spent time without basic necessities or maybe just not up to your standard of living? Did I strike a chord with you? Did you sense some sort of truth in my talk? Does it matter if I come to you in a suit, driving a new car and messy clothes without a ride? When I was hitchhiking, I met a man that sold airplanes in Alaska he was, new, he was a new salesman, and an old crusty guy come into the, sales, uh, the showroom, and the man wanted his son to take up a plane for a test flight. The other salesman, they got, they got together in the corner, they were laughing, ridiculed the man for even spending time with this old guy. But he persevered. He, he went to the manager, he said, listen, if I pay for the fuel, which is not inexpensive. If I pay for the fuel, will you let this guy take his, take his son up in the plane? And he convinced him. The son came down. The guy bought three. Three airplanes. You don't know. You don't know. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. I'm still the same guy, whether I have a suit on or messy clothes. 
I've got a master's degree in math. I can still teach calculus. I can design spreadsheets and write computer code. I built my own house, put together an automobile from the chassis up. I can drop a 100-foot tree right next to your house without it even touching it. I can read and interpret philosophy. I've owned a business and income property. I've even assembled toys, reading the directions right out of the box. <laughs> if I sell most of what I have and choose to step back from it all, I wouldn't have lost any of those experiences or the wisdom gained in going through them. In fact, I'm a better person to help others since now I'm unencumbered by this microphone. Poverty is the problem. Trying to sell everyone on the idea that becoming rich, that's the problem. Becoming rich is the only way that you can do anything good. I disagree. I'm the same guy. <laughs>